My name is Majora Carter, and I am just working to try to save the world. My mission statement really is to create local and economic environmental development at the same time, to really create the, the what I believe is the power of truly locally supported communities you know, through the environment and the uh, economy. Economic degradation begets environmental degradation, which in turn creates a social degradation. If we had built all of our polluting infrastructure from waste facilities, power plants, uh, sewage treatment plants, all those things in wealthy communities as quickly as we did in poor ones, we would have had a clean and green environment a long time ago, but we didn't. So basically when we put you know, all of that stuff on the backs of, of poor people, you then get all of the, of the problems you know, that are associated, decreased public health outcomes, you know, everything from respiratory problems to different kinds of cancer, to now that we know proximity to fossil fuel emissions causes learning disabilities in young kids creating, and we know that um, kids who do poorly um, in school have a tendency to go to jail in this country rather than on to um, higher education. So the social degradation that we're dealing with all directly related to all of those things. And then you also have the, um, you know, the, all the, the issues around the poverty and the fact that all of the impacts of it from public health to um, unemployment to incarceration, all those things related, you know, concentrated in those communities that also happen to be environmentally and economically challenged. So all those social issues absolutely can be dealt with if by chance we looked at the economy and the environment you know, as, as a tool for good rather than as a way to make it easier you know, for the wealthiest you know, folks in the community to be more comfortable. Because ultimately, it's going to come back to haunt us all. Like my hometown, the South Bronx, was literally burning around me starting from the time I was about seven years old. I mean, this was the, my neighborhood was the epitome of urban blight. I mean, there were, there were drug wars. My brother was killed in one of them. Um, you know, landlords were torching their buildings to collect insurance money. From the, to, from the, when I was seven years old, my brother got killed. I started thinking about, how am I going to get out of this place? I was not alone. And, you know, I, I used education as a way to get out. And I did. And uh, so that kind of notion of, you know, when you're living in a really poor neighborhood, that if you're successful, of course you leave. That's normal, you know, because it's, it's kind of, and you see it in a bunch of different education programs now. It's like they will pluck out the ones that are talented and tell them, you're so great, you know, you got to get out of here, and they do. And I think that that is a problem that we've got to deal with because what it does, it, 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 that kind of bright flight really deprives the rest of the community from the talent that's there. And it doesn't give the people that are there a sense of, of, of like, gosh, we could do this too. When there's nobody there like it, if all you see and know is poverty, then what else are you going to be? You can believe in the fact that you don't have to move out of your neighborhood to live in a better one, that we can be a part of helping to make it better, and that I want to show that there are things that we can all be doing together to make it a better place to be. Startup Box South Bronx, it's one of the programs that we're going to be working on through our new nonprofit called Hometown Security Laboratories. And basically, it's a tech initiative that's designed to support the startup uh, tech industry in the South Bronx, but also provide a, uh, a pipeline of new young entrepreneurs from the South Bronx in the tech world. Some of the hurdles for starting up a tech venture in the South Bronx is it's be not below 14th Street. <laughs> and that's a huge one. You know, we don't have the ecosystem right now that does make those kind of places so attractive. Um, you know, we don't have the great places to eat. We don't have the, com the tech community that finds this place a very special, thriving place to be because everybody's there. And so what we are trying to build is just that. You know, do we think we're going to compete immediately right away? Absolutely not. But do we think we can set up the infrastructure that allows, you know, people um, who we know are actually going to to school, you know, up in places like the Bronx, whether it's Lehman or, or or Bronx community, they're learning this stuff. Could they eventually graduate you know, and decide to go downtown or into Dumbo, Brooklyn? Absolutely. But we think that if we can create the kind of ecosystem where there is an attractive place for people to be, where they know that they're walking into a community that really appreciates their work, where they can also get a really good cup, you know, of, of cappuccino or um, or a drink, 
I mean, those are the type of things that we're trying to build into, into our model right now so that it's not just them in isolation. Because I think that if it is, they're, we're going to lose them right like that. I've always been a big believer that you've got to literally change what the environment looks like in order for people to see that something's changing. Otherwise, because you can't just talk about it. You've got to show and not tell. I'm Majora Carter, and you're watching Epiphany.